Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Monsters and the Things That Destroy Them by Vigor Games. It plays 2-4 to four players, takes roughly 15 minutes to 20 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Monsters and the Things That Destroy Them, you are going to be playing as uh, monsters and or the things that destroy them. You're going to choose either to play the dark or the deep base sets of the game, and um, you're going to be drawing cards, holding them into your hand, utilizing them by discarding them into your discard pile, checking to see what abilities come forth when you gain them, and at the end of the game, if you have the most value in your hand, or are able to reduce the value of your opponent's hand totals to being lower than yours, you'll win the game. It's simple, straightforward, and easy, and plays much like one of those 18 card style card games that you've probably played from you know, with just button shy games. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the game, how to play, and of course, my review for the game, Monsters and the Things That Destroy Them. The setup for the game is very simple. All you need to do is take a deck of cards, shuffle that deck of cards up, and deal out four face-up to form a pool in the center of the table. After that, go ahead and deal one card from the deck to each player face down into their discard pile, which they can of course look at. Then choose a player to start the game and proceed from there. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and both the dark and the deep play in the same exact manner. To play the game, it's just as simple as setting it up. You're simply going to, after choosing a player to start the game, have them choose any one of the face-up cards in the pool. After they do that, they will take that card and put it into their hand, after triggering its ability if it has one. Once the ability has been triggered, then the card from the deck on the top will be placed up into the pool to form four cards once again, and then if any player, of course the player being that player's turn, has more than three cards in their hand, they will discard one of their cards into their discard pile and the next player will get a chance to go, thusly taking a card from the pool, triggering its ability if there is one, flipping over a new card, and then discarding down to three cards. And the game will continue going like that until the deck has run out. Once the deck runs out, each player will get an equal number of turns, based on when the deck ran out, and whoever has the most points in their hand at the inner end is the winner. What's going to happen is players will choose two of the three cards in their hand and get rid of the other one, and reveal their biggest monster first, and then their smallest monster after that. And they'll total their combined points, and the player who has the most is the winner. Uh, like I said, there are certain cards, like monsters, and then there are other cards, like these tactical cards, that can reduce the value of a monster in somebody else's hand to zero. Like, for instance, since this obsession card is worth six points at the end of the game, but it will cancel out a one or a two card in any player's hands. So thusly removing those monsters as being no longer worth any value in points. And the same is said for silver bullets. So you'll be, you'll be wanting the monster cards or the tactical cards in your hand, depending on your strategy for the game. That being said, that's pretty much the idea of the game. Let's go ahead and discuss it. And of course, if you'd like, there is a playthrough video we did on the channel as well. Monsters and the Things That Destroy Them is a cute, straightforward, simple to play, and quite a bit of strategy type of a game. You'll be basically just drawing those cards and trying to formulate your strategy as well as keep your memory intact as to remembering who has what cards, when they have them, when they place them down to their discard pile, and what the end of the game they have. Because you need to not only have more points than them, but if you do not have that capability, you have to be able to cancel out their points to make your value higher. And so it becomes kind of a memory slash deduction game. There's a little bit of deception as well because players can get rid of cards into their discard pile and trick other players. And some cards will allow you to utilize specific actions that will let you uh, activate cards in your discard pile or your opponent's discard piles. All the monsters usually typically have different activatable abilities, like the monster, for instance, can choose a player and name a card. And if they have it, they have to discard it. So maybe you're not the person who has the highest value card, but you have a monster that can get rid of the highest value card, thusly giving you a higher chance of victory. Or perhaps there's Mr. Hyde, where you can take the top card from your discard pile and put it in your hand. And then for the rest of the game, your hand size is plus one, which is really nice. And then of course, there are the tactical cards. Most tactical cards, like the silver bullet here, will reduce the value of a monster in somebody's hand at the resolution phase, at the end of the game, to zero. And it'll tell you what types of cards that will do for. So five and a six, which is like the wolf and the, the wolf boy and the wolf man, basically silver bullets to get rid of werewolves, and thusly werewolves are worth nothing at the end of the game as long as somebody has this card in their hand. And then of course there's stuff like the super serum, or like the tactical nuke. The super serum will basically let the other card that you've chosen, so for instance if I chose the monster here, uh, be worth double its value. So now instead of seven, I have 14 points. And that's it. That's, 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 I, I just really like how simple and straightforward the game is, how easy it is to play, and the amount of like actual like tactical deduction that you need to have in the game. There's a little 
the deception, which is excellent uh, and works really well. And you can kind of tell what choices people really do have compared to what they don't. And then when they actually do choose to do a weird uh, decision, it can actually benefit them. It can uh, increase their, their likelihood of winning. And uh, the game is very, very light. Not a huge amount of cards, but there are multiple different uh, stylizations of the, of the game. There's the deep here, and this one over here is the dark. And they are themed based on the different types of monsters that you're going to be coming uh, into to dealing with, like the Kraken over here, the old one, so the Cthulian mythos, which I really like, and Scalia, uh, the white whale. <laughs> Uh, at hell's heart, I stab at thee. But uh, the artwork is excellent. I really, really enjoy the artwork for this game. Very kid-friendly, very fun, very cute. Um, the cards, quality, etc., etc., is, is fine. And this, this is the same creator who made the game Growl and uh, Chaos Mos, and the quality of those games is excellent. And so I would expect this game to be as well. This is a prototype, but I think what you see, or it might be a prototype. I'm not sure. What you see here is is great. Uh, if I got this exactly as it was standing, based on this game, I would be very, very satisfied with the product that I have. For those of you who want something light, something simple, but has a bit of deduction, a bit of strategy, and a bit of tension, and at the end of the game, a big fun surprise reveal, then this is going to be the game for you. If you want a game that's a little bit more in-depth than thick, then this is probably not going to work out. It's a very light game. It's one of those games that plays like those 18 card card games. You play through it, has replayability, but the game plays in the same similar manner each and every time. There's no groundbreaking different rule changes that's going to progressively make the game a little different um, each time you play it in the way that would be like, oh, instead of this time we draw two cards, or this one like that. It's, it's just simply drawing the card, activating the ability, and trying to remember what your opponents have in their hands, and keep what you have in your hand to be the highest value, or able to reduce their values to making yours the highest value at the end of the game. And that works really, really well for what this game is. There are going to be definitely a number of people who are going to be interested in this game. We really, really enjoy this game. This game works really well on our live stream. We played this live with a bunch of people, and they all really enjoyed themselves playing it as well. And so I I think for those of you who are on the fence with this, you should watch our live stream, see how it plays, and decide for yourself if monsters and the things that destroy them are for you. For me personally, if I'm playing a light night or I want to play a filler game in between games, this is going to be the perfect game to not only gateway people in to understanding the tactical decisions on keeping cards into your hand and also, of course, the fun reveal phase, but it's also something that I can use to transition between games uh, or I have I multiple game nights with different groups is going to work out as well. Regardless, though, let me know what you think down below in the comment section if you're interested in monsters and the things that destroy them. They're currently on Kickstarter, or you can go ahead and pick up this game if you would like. All right, time for the outro. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Monsters and the Things That Destroy Them. If you're interested in picking up the game, like I said, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up this game on Kickstarter or retail, depending on when this time is that this video has been released. You can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're doing a giveaway as well for a fantasy football trading card game that you're interested in picking up. It's in there as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. Patreon members, thank you so much. Live stream members joining us at 6.30 PST every week. Uh, every every week on Sunday, <laughs> you can go ahead and check out us play games literally just like this one. We did play this one with the designer himself, and uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to destroying some monsters with you next time. <laughs>